We're here for challenge two of Woods Canada's greatest explorer. These guys are getting sent off into the wilderness and they need to use elements of nature to express themselves. So I'm talking leaves, rocks, branches to create artwork. Hey, good morning, fellas. Hey. So challenge one, push your guys' limits physically. Today, this challenge will push your limits mentally. Today we'll be doing land art, and you'll be judged by Reinhard Reitenstein, art professor and practicing land artist. What I'll be looking for is, first and foremost, the aesthetic appeal of the object that you're going to make, and secondly, the use of materials and how you integrate those materials into the site, and then, you know, what's in here, what's in here. Right. So good luck. I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. I'm way out of my element on this one, for sure. Hopefully something clicks up here and make it look pretty. The challenge today is to tap into another side of me, I guess. The idea of explorer can take on many dimensions. Brawn, muscle, and endurance, and so on is, is obviously one key. However, it's also a reflective experience as well. So exploring means to be open. Totally unexpected, but I'm definitely excited to make some art, something I normally don't uh, do very often. What do you got going on here, man? I'm uh, doing a bit of weaving, something I've never tried before. Definitely a bit of a curveball, but yep. uh, it's good because I don't think there's really anyone in this competition that's got a clear advantage over anybody else. It's just kind of doing the best with what we got, so I'm hoping to come out on top. Land art is about being where you are and being aware of the place that you are and being sensitive to where it is that you are. For me, the forest is something magic. It's a place just marvelous. So I wanted to reproduce a forest at the interior of the forest. I'm just following my heart and just building something that reminds me of the forest and I'm just using all the bush to build it. I'm not very artsy, but I'll see what I can make out of this. <laughs> so far, I see uh, a pile of kindling for a fire but uh, apparently Les has got something bigger in the works. What I'm looking for is how sensitive they are to the actual materials in the sites that they're working with. First appearance, it all looks kind of boring and lots of dry leaves and a bunch of green stuff. However, once you start inspecting the land around you, you'll notice sound, smell, sight, texture, color. All of these components will feed their imaginations and, and how they work with them. I'm gonna use some of the rocks. Uh, I like the look of this tree with all the the bark and the texture, and then I'm just going to try to use the leaves there, flow it into the ground, and hopefully get me some points. As a former soldier, I've lost friends uh, in combat, also uh, other brother in, in arms. My plan is to build a small wooden cross that I'm going to plant in the ground. Life and death is nature, so death is the the death of, the, of my friend soldiers, but the life will be the nature around it. We got a little uh, circle happening here. My inspiration for this is the circle of life. Everyone takes a journey and uh, you always sort of end up where you started, I find. And the ultimate goal is to uh, suspend it amongst these two trees here, sort of like a sun in the sky. I'm looking to make straight lines as much as I can because there's no such things as straight lines in nature just because it will contrast the rest of the forest. Oh, that's a full-on rainstorm now. Yep. What I've done is I've taken um, a map uh, yep. and plotted uh, every single continent. Now that I'm trying to use as many different aspects as I can from my surroundings here and uh, hopefully it'll all come together and look all right. Kind of nice how the water is the canvas. See what uh, the weather does to it. So the water and the rain are kind of welcoming each other here. I'm pretty impressed with how people have taken this on. It's, it's really interesting visiting site to site and seeing how people have persisted with the elements kind of challenging them. Uh, it's raining out here. I'm working on my landscape artwork. I'm trying to create a nice uh, relaxing spot on this place that I call the River Jude. River Jude is my daughter and I'm, I'm just setting up a little montage to her. RJ and her initials weeped. Just playing in the mud, like a little kid. We got the Ogopogo man with his beard. I have to make 159 cross. That's all the soldiers we lost in the Afghanistan mission. Everyone is so on board and so absolutely committed to finishing and finishing with panache. Kevin's the first one done, so we're gonna check out his art piece. It's called Tecumseh. There's a quote 
from him that says, a twig will break, but a bundle of twigs is strong. The small branches are holding up the rock. It's always important, en tant qu'explorateur, to have the right direction. It's also in life of every day, to know where we go. It inspired me to make a rose of the wind. I tried to build a living swing today. Um, I sat here trying to make rope for about three hours, and then that's suspending this plank that I found and kind of cut to shape. I've done the tour of seeing all 12 uh, guys working, and they've really come up to the challenge, and it's going to be tough. I need some time to think about this. All right, fellas, that's the end of challenge two. It was really cool to see you guys pour your heart and soul into your pieces. But now it's time to find out where you all rank. Reinhardt's gonna give you the rundown. First and foremost, an unbelievable performance. On every level, nobody dropped the ball. We're gonna start from number four. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough gig to deal with, with Memorial yeah, in the forest. It's pretty powerful. Mike's piece was deeply heartfelt. He went with what felt right, the memory of guys who gave up their lives. The reason it was in fourth and not first is because it's a memorial that could be done in a variety of places. It wasn't distinct to this site. Number three, the circle of life. Cam? Yeah, Cam! To make something of that scale, that was pretty audacious. And I also think the site, the location of it, was really quite, quite wonderful. Cam was a lovely surprise because there's a sense of a hopefulness in, 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 in the idea of that hoop, the wheel of life he talked about. And I mean, he just went for it and Cam sort of delivered a piece that's super simple, super clean. There was no nonsense and it was a, a really direct hit in a really good sight. Number two, there was one guy that stands out in terms of raw beauty and that was Devin. Yeah, you. Are you surprised at yourself right now? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Devin's work was ex exquisitely beautiful, uh, super delicate, highly sensitive. He felt that the land structured the piece for him, essentially. And uh, numero uno, the guy who did something so fully unexpected, Aaron. Hey! Yeah, Aaron! Not bad. Like who would have thought text in the forest? Aaron was the surprise that someone could put letters into the landscape and have that still feel like it's not an intervention that is in inappropriate. It was not only appropriate, it was like a dance in the kind of valley of water and, and there was this beautiful sense of motion. And uh, I think his dependence on, on family as a continuity in his life uh, was beautifully honored. All right, well, thanks a lot, Reinhardt. All right, so that's challenge two in the books. Aaron came out on top winning the Land Dart Challenge. Now on to challenge three, the last round for eliminations. There's four explorers on the chopping block, but the game isn't over yet. Stoked to see how this plays out.